Kevin Davis from BioIT World at NGX, the next generation sequencing conference hosted by CHI in Providence, Rhode Island. I'm joined by our opening speaker today, Nancy Kelly, who is the founding executive director of the New York Genome Center. Nancy, thanks for making a bit of time. Thank you. So, the New York Genome Center, we're going to talk about your new home in, uh, in just a minute, but tell us, if you can, in a couple of minutes, how you and, your, and others, of course, pulled this off. How did you get 11 fiercely competitive, proud New York institutions to uh, buy into your vision and that of a few other key collaborators and uh, agree to become part of the New York Genome Center? Well, there was a lot of discussion and debate over almost a year's period. And um, at the end of the day, the factual foundation for creating such a center was so strong that it couldn't be argued with. The institutions needed this in order to move forward. But putting a genome center in the middle of Manhattan, it must have raised a few eyebrows and a few naysayers, I dare say, along the way. Of course. Whenever a new project starts, there's always naysayers. But uh, you just got to get up every day and know that it's important and work at making it happen. And that's what we've done. And uh, as far as being in the middle of New York, couldn't be a better place to start a genome center. So tell us about the location. You must have looked at dozens, if not hundreds, of potential sites. You've announced uh, a site in Soho uh, in, on the Avenue of the Americas. Why that particular location? And tell us a little bit about what, how it's going to look when it uh, is ready for uh, uh, business in, in about uh, six or nine months' time. Sure. We actually looked at over 100 sites in Manhattan and in the Bronx and in Brooklyn. Uh, at the end of the day, none of them fit our needs. There were three major components that had to fit. One was the building had to be structurally sound and able to uh, withhold the mechanical equipment and other things that our operation is going to need. Two, it had to be zoned properly so that we could conduct not only sequencing but also wet laboratory work there. And then finally, it had to be very conveniently located in a good neighborhood so that all of the institutions could get to it quickly and felt like it was a neutral location. And uh, what's the building? Tell us a bit about the building itself and, and what can we expect when you uh, open next year? So interestingly enough, the building is an office building. And I originally did not look at it because I didn't think it would meet our needs. But the owner of the building, Ed Minskoff, chased me around New York enough uh, to get me to take a look. And when I did, I realized that it could be perfect if it was structurally sound. And so we did the analysis, and we do need to do some structural reinforcement. But other than that, it will fit the different components of what we're going to put there. So on the first, we have the first to the seventh floor. The first floor will be a full-scale training and conference facility that seats 180 people with 180 uh, people in a cafe. Uh, on the second floor and third floor is expansion space, which we may sublet. And then the fourth to the seventh floor houses wet lab, bioinformatics, uh, our data storage, um, a variety of other activities. and administration. And when do you expect that uh, the building and particularly the lab and the scientific operation to be functional? Sometime after the end of the second quarter of next year. Okay. In the meantime, the New York Genome Center is up and running. Uh, you've uh, leased a space or you're using some space at Rockefeller, I believe. You're hiring, you've got a team, you're doing research. Tell us a bit about what's going on at the moment. So, yeah, I mean, we actually launched our services at AGBT in February. Uh, with the announcement of a research collaboration on Alzheimer's with Peter Davies, who is one of our researchers from the Feinstein Institute. That was very exciting and it was nine months ahead of time because of the demand that was out there from the institutions. That was followed up by the decision to install a, a pilot laboratory at Rockefeller so that we could do additional projects. We've just opened that. We've, we've accepted our first samples. They're being QC'd and, and sequenced. And so all of that's very exciting. We now have 33 people on board. 17 of them are scientists, a number of bioinformatics scientists. And they come from all over the world in some of the best genome centers in the world. 
And in terms of where, how quickly the center is going to grow, t tell us about how, I've seen some quotes in the press that, you know, people saying this is going to be potentially the biggest genome center in the country, if not the world. Is that something that you really, uh, uh, is that your view? Well, when we built the financial model for the business plan, we had to start somewhere in terms of what's the current demand in New York as far as we could estimate it, and how fast is it likely going to grow. With 11 institutions of this size, obviously that is a huge benefit because you have a, an audience that's already out there and ready to use your facility. So we just projected the demand. That I'm fairly certain of. Whether we have the largest number of instruments or whether we're using instruments that are smaller now but generating larger numbers of sequences, that remains to be seen. And uh, perhaps in, in a closing question, uh, is it too early to talk about how the, the, the basic research versus the clinical component of the center is going, how is that going to play out? Uh, presumably you're interested in, in providing both as the 11 institutions will, some will favor more basic research and some obviously more, more medical. How, are you going to get clear approval for example? Yes. So a lot of our institutions have hospitals that are affiliated with them, very, very large hospitals. And obviously sequencing and the interpretation of that data and data warehousing is going to be very important for medical delivery in the next 10 years. Um, so a portion of our facility will be CLIA certified and we will be working to move that effort forward and I dare say it will probably uh, end up comprising a larger component of what we do than the basic research. Well Nancy Kelly it's an amazing success story already and you've only just begun so congratulations and thanks for being here. Thank you Kevin.